for the eyes of the world now look into space to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. I fully believe that uh, we're not alone and have for many, many years, even though but at the time I went to the moon, it was the conventional wisdom, both in science and theology, that we were alone in the universe. We're just barely out of the trees, even though we think we're rather sophisticated. But I do like to tell the story that my great-grandparents came across from southern United States to the west after our Civil War. And I went to the moon yes, less than 100 years later. They came across in covered wagons. So from covered wagons to going to the moon in less than 100 years in our lifetime is a rather significant event that tells us how primitive we have been until the modern era, and we're still pr rather primitive. Uh, because of my uh, openness to these things, I did have many of the old timers in the military and in the uh, intelligence community over the years wanting to get it off their chest before they passed away uh, allowed me to interview them and talk to them about it. And so my ideas became fairly well solidified in the fact we've been visited. We have to remember that right after World War II, the Army Air Force was separated and became the, Ar became the Air Force, a separate branch of service. And that the of OSS, which was the Office of Special Services, was disbanded and eventually became the CIA. So that <clears throat> Here was a major military organization and a major intelligence organization, totally in disarray, new founded, didn't know what they were doing after World War II and not really reorganized yet. And as a result of that, the President Truman at that time um, convened a very high level uh, committee to examine this alien or UFO phenomenon. They did come to the conclusion that it was alien, and the military uh, rightly came to the conclusion, if, this, if they're hostile, there's nothing we can do about it. Therefore, their choice was to deny it and to hush it up and create a, the National Security Act of 1947, which validated that uh, uh, deception and covered it up and allowed the group to go underground, as it were. And we've been living with that now for 50 years. It is really the uh, beginning of the whole cover-up, the, the entire denial of this phenomenon. And uh, the addition of dismissal, disinformation, misinformation uh, to cloak and to discourage uh, investigation, to misinform, it's just been continuous for many, many years now. Eventually it came away from the fear, I believe, of uh, not being able to protect and do their duty to uh, the notion of power and control, controlling the knowledge and the technology. And the group involved with that is still doing it. We have created our reality here, and we have created it right now rather badly, for it's not a sustainable reality. We have created with our science and technology, instead of using it for the greater good, it's been captured by uh, interest, greed, 
self-service, uh, which is rife, and instead of using it, all of our technology and our brilliance and genius for greater good, we, we use it for self-service. And that's not going to work. It's important that we look at our civilization, our place in history, use our tools of science for greater understanding, to promote the greater good, and that's what it's all about.